In part one, we explored Muhammad Ali Jinnah's early life. We saw that he had a great interest in law and became the youngest Indian to be called to the bar. We looked at his entrance into politics, which allowed him to become the voice for Muslims in the Indian subcontinent. Although he did want peace to be restored in the land, his views of how it should be done was strikingly different from those of Mahatma Gandhi. Determined to not have the Muslim people be seen as just second class citizens, Jinnah pushed for a separate state. Thanks for joining me here on part two on the life of Muhammad. Ali Jinnah. My name is Leroy Kenton and if you haven't seen part one yet I highly recommend you check that out before you watch this episode. It fills in all the gaps and all the details so you'll get an idea of where we're coming from when we start off this episode. So let me pick up where I left off in the last episode but actually before I do that I want to know what causes do you support directly? You know are there any charitable causes, any religious causes, any political or social causes that you support? I'd love to know. The Muslim demand for Pakistan to be formed first came in in 1940. The Hindus as well as the British were both equally surprised that a demand for a separate state had invoked such an intense response from Muslims. They failed to understand how a hundred million people had all of a sudden became so aware of their distinct nationality. This was a clear showing of the power and influence of Jinnah. The negotiations between the Muslim League and Congress were prolonged and dragged out. The League was constantly undermined and Jinnah was forced to make strategic and tactical moves every step of the way to make sure that Muslims weren't cheated out of their demands. And that viewpoint that he and other Muslims shared led up to the riots in 1946. The communal riots that erupted became so bad and the time for a peaceful transfer of power was running out. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the British sent Lord Mountbatten to India. Mountbatten was to negotiate with the various political leaders by which it was decided to hand over power to two successor states on August 15th. 15th, 1947. Pakistan was carved out of the Muslim dominant regions of Northwest India and the province of Bengal in the east. And though Jinnah warned against it, Lord Mountbatten had ensured that the two major provinces of India, Punjab and Bengal, were cut in half. In recognition for Jinnah's contribution in carving out Pakistan, he was nominated by the Muslim League as the Governor General of Pakistan. Now although the Muslims experienced a newfound freedom, not everything was all a bed of roses for them. Pakistan had many major problems. They did not inherit a central government for one, they didn't have a capital, they had no defense force, nothing. And on top of that, many areas were in shambles after the riots as well as the mass migrations of Hindus and people of other religions. Their communication networks were down and the economy was left completely shattered. The treasury had absolutely nothing in it. It's nothing short of a miracle on how Pakistan survived that against all odds and still managed to thrive as a nation. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, he had laid down the policies of the new state and he dealt with the immediate problems. He saw to it that the law and order was maintained at all costs despite the threat of riots happening. He moved from Karachi to Lahore for a while and supervised the immediate refugee problem in Punjab. In the time of violence, chaos and disorder, Jinnah remained calm, collected and strong. I mean, this man was completely relentless. He reversed the British policy in the Northwest frontier and ordered the withdrawal of the troops from the tribal territory of Waziristan, thereby making the Pathans feel like they were an integral part of Pakistan. He settled the controversial question of the states of Karachi. He secured the acquisition of states, especially Kalat, which seemed problematic and carried on negotiations with Lord Mountbatten for the settlement of the Kashmir dispute. It was, therefore, with great satisfaction in completing his mission that Muhammad Ali Jinnah gave the nation his last message on August 14, 1948. And in it he said, the foundations of your state have been laid and it is now for you to build and build as quickly and as well as you can. It said that Jinnah contributed more than any other man to Pakistan's survival. With everything that he had to deal with, it left Jinnah completely physically and emotionally exhausted. He spent several months in Zirat in hopes of recovering his health. After battling tuberculosis and pneumonia, Muhammad Ali Jinnah died on September the 11th, 1948 at the age of 59. Pakistanis saw Jinnah as a leader who gave them their own homeland against impossible odds and they called him the Qaid e Azam, which translates to the great leader. Considering the scale of his accomplishments, it's no surprise that even to this present day, Jinnah is still a topic of debate. No one, however, can deny that Jinnah did what few in history have done, 
almost single-handedly created an entire nation. If you enjoyed our two-part series on Muhammad Ali Jinnah, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if this is your first time here. You can also check out our other videos that we've done on Pakistan, as well as we've documented several other people in videos all here for you on FTD Facts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.